Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Watercolor Wednesday episode. Last week we painted a beautiful cabin in the woods under the northern lights, so I thought it would be appropriate that this week we paint a cabin in the mountains, and specifically looking out a window that is in a cabin situated in the mountains. So let's get started. As always, I have opted to tape the borders of my watercolor piece of paper with scotch tape just because I really like that nice clean and crisp border after the painting is finished, but you can skip this step if you don't care about this or don't have scotch tape. Then we're going to begin with the background. So we want to paint on really nice clean and bright colors uh, to insinuate a beautiful sunset or sunrise, whatever you prefer really. And you're going to create a gradient of pink, yellow, and palish skin colored tones. Uh, and you want to make sure that the yellow is more centered towards the middle of your painting. Uh, it's just going to make the whole sunset effect look a lot nicer if you structure your colors that way. And you're going to paint on uh, a few layers, I think three will do, until you are happy with the gradient and the opacity of your background. Before your final layer has dried of your background gradient, this is where you want to start painting on the wisps of clouds that are going to make this painting so dramatic and beautiful. So you can take some purple watercolor mixed with a little bit of magenta, or just pink, uh, it will create this sort of magenta color if you mix it with the purple and you're going to paint on those wisps of clouds. So the key thing here is to start your wisps from the borders, both borders, both sides of the piece of paper, and gently wisp them out so that the ending of your cloud is really pointy. Because the background is wet, the clouds will naturally saturate into the paper and spread out and look really whimsical and magical. You can also add some horizontal clouds towards the bottom of the sunset. If, I don't know, I just felt like if I painted wisps that came from the bottom of the piece of paper and pointed upwards, it would look a little bit strange. So I just opted for some horizontal clouds towards the, the bottom portion. Make sure, however, that you are painting this while the background is still wet, because what happened in my painting, and you can really tell here, uh, is that a portion of the painting dried before I was finished painting the background. So what I ended up doing here is waiting until that background was completely dry, and then I applied another layer of water before I basically redid the clouds to intensify them and bring out more definition because I really wasn't happy with how they dried the first time. It kind of gave off that cauliflower effect, which is what tends to happen if you are painting um, on a background that is half dry, half wet, because the, the paint basically stops where the, um, the border of the wet and the dry portion, and it, yeah, it creates, it creates a cauliflower and it. it's not really nice to look at. Once your painting has completely dried, you're going to start the mountain ranges. So I actually painted, I believe, four layers of mountains, and the first layer you want it to be the lightest uh, compared to every single subsequent layer. So every subsequent layer is going to progressively get a little bit darker and darker, and you want to paint each subsequent layer uh, a little bit lower than the mountain range before it because you want the ones behind to also be visible to the viewer. I ended up using sort of a black mixed with purple for my mountain layers and then the final two uh, mountain layers were mostly black because I wanted them to really pop and stick out. I also want to take this opportunity to encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying this video uh, and also consider liking this video because it really helps the YouTube algorithm and helps me grow as a small artist. Mm -hmm. 
Keep in mind that you want to make sure your layers are completely dry before you add the next layer, otherwise it will bleed into the layer before it and you won't get that clean and crisp edge. So once your mountains have completely dried, you're going to paint that window. So I just used a piece of regular paper here to help guide my window frame, uh, like the cross that's in the middle of a window frame. You can use a ruler or you can use tape, uh, anything really works. But you're taking black watercolor here and you're just outlining that X in the window frame. Later I used some tape to thicken and straighten out those lines because they weren't completely straight, uh, so you can do the same. Here you can see me using tape to help me create a, create a really straight line. Here I'm painting on the shutters of the window. The shutters are totally optional, I just wanted to add another layer of, uh, I don't know, detail to the painting uh, because I thought it looked a little bit bare by itself and I, I mean you can, you can do a lot of things to spruce up this painting. You can paint birds in the background like I will do or you can paint a parachute man or a plane. Um, there are so many things that you can paint in the background uh, kind of towards the sunset that will really make it pop and make it look beautiful. I'm just adding some final touches here, little birds in the background flying in a v-shape. Uh, you can skip the step, it's barely visible really, but I really like the, those little details at the end. Once your painting has completely dried and you are satisfied with it, you can peel the border tape uh, off of the edges of the piece of paper if you opted to do to apply those in the beginning and you're all finished. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in next week's video.